This is your Lake of the Ozarks fishing report for uh, September 22nd, 2016. This report is an Upper Osage Lake of the Ozarks fishing report and it's courtesy of Joe's Lake Ozark uh, Guide Service. Lake level right now in the Upper Lake area is pretty full. I mean, it's lakes, it's about as full as you can get it without being declared over, over, over the full pool. So uh, we've had <clears throat> a lot of changing in the water conditions and clarity and, and level in the last week and a half. We went from dropping the lake a foot, foot and a half for a week, a two week period until a week ago Friday when we had a lot of rain, not only here at the lake, but in areas around the lake that, that uh, tributaries that feed into the lake that raised the lake back up about a foot, foot and a half. And then the lake got really dirty in the upper end uh, as that re as result happened. And then, um, in a few days, the water has cleared up substantially in the upper area. In fact, it's clearer now than it was before they actually started dropping the lake about two weeks ago. You can see down about a foot, you know, eight inches to a foot uh, visibility. Whereas of three or four days ago, water was still pretty dirty. You could only see down about two or three inches. So for those of you who are fishing uh, any BFL tournament action this weekend, that's kind of what's going on in the upper lake area. For those of you who are fishing the Big Bass Bash here in another week, Kind of gives you an idea of where the water's at now and you can monitor uh, where the water level is as we uh, go on into the bash. If they start dropping the lake, that's probably going to clear the upper end of the lake, the upper area of the lake up because it's cool to pull a lot of that mud and any dirty water out of the creeks and into the main channel and then on down the lake. That's usually how things work. Water temperature, because we've had some warmer weather here lately, water temperature's gone up. It's gone up back into the around 80, low 80s. I think today was 82 or 83. And so, um, because that, the way that's happened, the, the bite has kind of changed a little bit. We were catching a lot of fish, some nice fish in the backs of creeks and on the main lake flats. And as the water has warmed up, it's kind of pulled those fish back. So right now for us on the guide trips I've been conducting and been on the water, our bite's been really more like a summer type bite where you go out and catch a, catch a lot of fish early, tails off in the middle of the day, and then the bite picks up back up towards the evening hour. So almost like you would have in a, in a summer pattern. Hopefully some cool weather next week might change us back into that fall pattern that we're used to and it'll push the shad and bait back up onto the flats and in the back of the creeks. Now the shad are still in the back of the creeks. They're not in big huge balls and bunches like they were, but they are still in the back of the creeks. You can't visibly see them flipping on the surface in, in a lot of the creeks we've been going into, but if you look at your graph and your depth finders, you can see they're down underneath the surface and they're just kind of swimming around. In fact, last night when I was out muttering around uh, yesterday afternoon, early evening, a lot of the shad were pretty much glued and stuck to the bottom. I mean, those shad schools, they look like brush piles stuck to the bottom. So they definitely were not up chasing shad and up uh, moving around, but they are still kind of in the back of the creeks. All right, uh, <clears throat> the bite we had this morning was, uh, we caught some smaller fish in the back of the creeks, but a lot of the bigger fish we caught we're out on the secondary points and on the main lake points and even caught them on some bluff ends. Caught some fairly good sized keepers on the bluff ends. Didn't really catch any really big, big fish that you might need to catch as far as uh, taking fish to a weigh in for the big bass bash. But most of the bigger fish that we've been catching the last few days has been pulled out towards the points. That's kind of what we've been doing. And a lot of that I think is due to the water clarity and the shad that kind of moved out a little bit. Most of the big balls of shad that we're seeing on our graphs are about halfway back in the coast from the point to about halfway back in the coast so i think they've kind of pulled out of the backs the big balls of shed and they've moved out just a hair not a whole lot but you, you look on your graph and you can see the bigger balls are about halfway back when you come into the cove all right uh, you know lures you can try right now you can still get bit in the back of the creeks low light conditions you can throw top waters you know i've shown you the zero spooks before and of course the pop r is a good bait you can throw uh, you can stop it, you know, just like a spook. Buzz bait's good. Crocker Gator makes an excellent buzz bait that you can throw. Uh, it's a great search bait to throw in the back of the creeks and in any areas you want to throw them. But what's what's great about the Crocker Gator buzz bait has the real flat spoon-like head, and this bait will really get up on the surface and plane. I usually throw the big three-quarter ounce bait because I can keep this bait up on the surface a lot easier than I can a smaller bait of uh, the Crocker Gator head knocker. So. And the nice thing about the head knocker is you can you can bend the wire so it'll bang and clack on the head of the bait, or you can bend the wire up away from it so it'll be more silent. So if you get in calmer, you know, water, slick water, you might go with a quieter approach. 
to get it with a little bit of wind or chop on the water you need a little more more noise more commotion you can bend that blade back down and have it really knock on that head and it'll make some noise uh, because the lake is up it's also up in a lot of the shallow wood cover that's in the back of the creeks and along the banks and so uh, the square bills you know catching a lot of fish on the square bill in fact on our guide trips right now we're probably catching more fish on these square bills than we are any other lure uh, as far as back in the creeks as we get out more on the main lake areas we still, still can catch them on smaller uh, smaller uh, topwater lures uh, we can catch them on jigs and uh, we, we can catch still use the square bill a little bit on the main lake but it's really more of a creek back of the creek type uh, bait we're using right now and then we're still pitching docks uh, with the jig jig and crawl uh, any jig type bait you've got the uh, G lock with the with the beaver head style with the beaver style bait on it still pitching and catching bite fish on those not as many on those as we've been catching before uh, because I think the shad been down we've been fishing the jig down on the docks just a little bit more on the bottom than we have just swimming it along the dock corners and dock edges um, you can still catch fish uh, on the points you can still use the big 10 inch worm Texas rigged the big 10 inch worm in the brush piles and then uh, you can still throw the we throw a lot of the zoom magnum trick worms on the shaky heads uh, you can throw those on the bluff ends the bluff walls you can throw those on there and you can also uh, throw these on the points really good base to throw on the secondary points uh, we throw these zoom trick worms so like I said things have changed up here in the last week or two with the water conditions uh, According to Ameren, they're going to continue to drop, try to drop the lake through this week and then let it stable off through the weekend. So anticipating through the weekend, the water will kind of hold about a half a foot below full pool. And then I'm assuming next week, depending on any weather changes, they're probably going to continue to drop. So for those of you who are fishing the Big Bass Bash, get on Ameren's website and monitor uh, what they're going to do with the water level. Because if they drop that lake, it's going to pull more fish out. It's going to clear the water up you know especially in the upper area and as this water clears it's the fish seem to go a little bit deeper so uh, good luck in your uh, your fishing good luck to those of you who are fishing the BFL this weekend good luck to those who are fishing the bash next weekend hundred thousand dollars on the line uh, I hope it doesn't look like that scene from Jaws where they're throwing dynamite in the water and their boats are crossing each other's you know bow I hope everybody's safe and courteous and uh, but be careful running around there's gonna be a lot of people running around and one more word of caution if you're gonna be motoring in the upper lake area there's a lot of debris in the upper lake area in the main channel a lot of logs flowing floating just a lot of debris that's been washed out of the creeks washed off the bank and as they're pulling the lake it's just gonna suck and pull that debris down down the channel uh, down the lake so be careful if you're motoring in the dark to your spots because I uh, hate for you to ruin your weekend because you tear up a lower unit because you run over a log that you couldn't see so good luck in your fishing thank you